This is Supplemental Movie 4, uh, which is a tutorial uh, associated with the Nature Protocol X-ray Structure Determination using low resolution EM maps for molecular replacement. In this tutorial, we are going to uh, prepare a molecular replacement solution for phase extension, and then we are going to um, set up the phase extension process. At this point, we have a solution from MR. We just determined uh, NCS in that solution. But what our MR solution does not have that we need for phase extension is we need Hendri Hendricks and Lattman coefficients. We can determine those using the figure of merit that's found in the MR solution, and we're going to use a CCP4 tool to do that. Uh, so CCP4 is right here. Uh, the tool we're going to use is the convert FOM to from HL, which is found in the reflection data utilities. So reflection data utilities convert FOM to from HL. And then here we need to just uh, change phi FOM to HL coefficients. Uh, we want to give it a job title. That makes sense. We need to find uh, the path to our phaser solution, which if you're working from the tutorial is supplemental uh, file 7 or it's the MTZ file that was produced by your phaser run. So uh, we'll select this file here and then we need to make sure that we have the right array selected here so this should be thick and here this needs to be FOM and then uh, the work MTZ out file we're going to call this uh, supplemental file 9. Supplemental file 9, cascade phaser HL MTZ. And, and uh, once you've hit the run button, it uh, finishes almost instantaneously. Uh, now that we have uh, Hendricks and Lattman coefficients uh, associated with our phaser solution, we can uh, now merge our low resolution phaser solution with our high resolution uh, x-ray data. And to do that, uh, we need to go into the Phoenix GUI, um, into Reflection Tools tab, Reflection File Editor. And here we're going to add a, the uh, file we just created that has the Hendrickson Latin coefficients um, supplemental file uh, supplemental file nine. We're also going to add the high resolution X-ray data, which is provided as supplemental uh, file number one. So now we have low resolution uh, phases in, from our phaser solution from our um, phaser solution with Hendrickson, Hendricks and Lattman coefficients and our high resolution X-ray data, and we need to merge these together. So, what we uh, first thing to make sure we cl uh, select correctly is the array in the X-ray data that is associated with um, the high resolution amplitudes. And in this case, I process this data with XDS and XDS aimless. And so uh, my array is this FXDS data set. And so I'm going to add that. And then we want to um, add all the arrays from the phaser solution with Hendricks and Lattman coefficients. And we're going to put plus over here. And here it says it has two label conflicts. That's because there are two sources for structure factors. Um, we're going to, but that's not really a problem. So we're just going to edit the array. Here you can see that uh, it simplified these XDS arrays into uh, F sig F, Dano, sig Dano, and ISIM. That's going to be important uh, in the next step that you know uh, what the where the high what what arrays have the high resolution X-ray data. Uh, here you do need to edit one array, which is the Hendrickson-Lattman coefficients. Um, these uh, periods don't work 
uh, when you're merging arrays. And so we need to just simplify these Hendrickson Lapman coefficient data labels. OK, and then we hit OK. Final thing is to go to output options and make sure that the output file and directory makes sense. I'm going to call this um, uh, cascade merged reflections and job title uh, merging low res phaser with high res x-ray. Something like that. Should work. Okay, I'm going to run the program here. Here it's telling us that it's had to change some of the labels because we have two um, uh, structure factor arrays and um, this is okay for me. And it's finished. So now we're going to use this merged file in uh, Resolve, the program Resolve, to uh, extend the phases into high resolution. So we go to Maps in Phoenix, Phoenix GUI, and go to Resolve Density Modification Tool. And here we add the file of um, that we just made, the Cascade Merged Reflections. And the first thing we need to do is uh, modify the data type of this file from initial map to initial map and experimental data. Uh, the input file options, uh, here we can define what arrays we want to use. Uh, Resolve does a great job of identifying these arrays automatically, but they can be included here. Um, just to uh, make sure that it uses the right array for high resolution, I'm going to use the array uh, from the, ex well, let me show you where I find that array. So we can click on this tool right here, and this will tell us what's in this MTZ file. And this first array has data from a resolu resolution range of 40 to 3.24 angstroms. And that's, that's what we want to use. Um, so this is the F, SIG F, Dano, SIG Dano, and ISIM. So I'm just going to um, close out of this and out of here and return to the input file options and type those array labels. Hit OK. Uh, now uh, we need to change some of the parameters under here in the All Parameters button. Crystal info. Uh, the solvent fraction of the cascade crystals was determined by Matthew's coefficient calculator to be about 0.5. The resolution limit of this data set is 3.24. And the sequence, all that needs to be placed here is a string of A's. Uh, it just needs some information there, but it doesn't need to be accurate. And then um, the chain type will just say it's protein and hit OK. Uh, the other parameter that we need to modify here is we need to tell Resolve that we have found some NCS. This NCS file needs to be associated with the phaser solution. So in this case, the phaser, the phaser solution that I'm using is uh, the provided file. The supplemental file 7 was then converted. We found the Hendrickson Lapman coefficients of that file. If you did this on your own and have been working with a new phaser solution, you need to find NCS in that new phaser solution. So here. Uh, supplemental file 8 is a find NCS uh, so 
NCS dot, a dot NCS spec file that is associated with um, the supplemental file 7 phaser solution. So this is going to work. And we don't need to um, mess with any of these buttons. We're going to hit OK. And that should help resolve work. Now, what we want to do is work in macro cycles of 0.25 angstroms, starting at 8 angstroms and working down to 3.24. So here we need to say that the high resolution limit of resolve, we want that to be 3.24. And then here in the meta density modification button, we want to tell resolve what resolution we want it to start these macro cycles. And so we want to start the macro cycles at just, we can even say we want it to start at 8 angstroms. Um, and we want to uh, step in uh, 0.25 angstrom macro cycles. So we should hit OK. Now we want to give it a run title. So the run title that I'm going to use is Cascade uh, Resolve from 8 to 3.24. And we need to give it an output directory, which uh, that'll work uh, at the Cascade tutorial. And I think we're ready to go. So we'll hit run and run now. And it will uh, begin the run. This will take upwards, um, it takes about 15 to 30 minutes for every macro cycle. And so in this case, it could take upwards of four to five hours to, to finish uh, the run using this data. So although Resolve does take a, a while to finish, is it going from, uh, say, eight angstroms to 3.24 angstroms, you actually can evaluate the progress of the phase extension at every uh, macro cycle. And this is done by accessing the uh, auto build folder uh, that uh, was created when you started the run. So in the case of the run we just started, there's an auto build folder called auto build run seven and it has uh, files that are um, permanent files and also temporary files. Temporary files are stored here in this um, temp uh, zero uh, file and there's what I've done to show you uh, how to analyze this is I saved uh, a temporary file from the previous run. Um, that's here. And um, as it went through macro cycles, it will save a resolve work file at each uh, 0.25 angstrom increment. And so there are uh, six resolve work files associated with um, a previous run that I did. Uh, in that previous run, I was moving from 5 angstroms to 3.24 angstroms. And uh, these, these resolve work files can be opened in Coot. So just to kind of show how this works, let's open up resolve work. Um, number one or the previous run that I did, Resolve Work 1. What you should see is it's going to be uh, around 5 angstrom resolution. Let's uh, change the uh, map parameters here to about 40. And scroll a little bit. So at 5 angstroms, we can see some uh, density there. Um, we can see a little bit of secondary structural elements. You can see some uh, some helices, and but beta sheets are kind of still distorted. Um, so let's open up uh, one of the more final uh, resolve work MTZs. And so this would be several macro cycles later. We're talking on terms of maybe maybe a, a two or three hours have passed since we started um, the phase extension process. But here now as you toggle, let's see, we'll get this to the same contour level. And as we toggle between the low resolution and the higher resolution, 
you can see now that, especially there in the middle, that now you can see uh, beta sheets and alpha helices, and this is you should be able to uh, analyze this progression as you run through macro cycles. Uh, the final MTZ file will um, will come out as a as a result in Resolve. Uh, let me kind of, let me show you what that would look like. Uh, You'll have a summary of your files, and this overall best Denmod map coefficients MTZ will be uh, your best your best MTZ file into which you can hopefully build uh, an atomic model.